Ever After, a Once Upon a Time podcast, Season 1, Episode 9, True North. I am your host, Molly Southgate, with me is Martha Southgate and Rob Southgate. All right, let's talk about the show. So this one was awesome. This was yeah. a very dark episode. This is one, yes. of, one of the creepier ones, but yeah. I loved it. Yeah. Oh. Me too. It gets darker and darker and darker. Yeah. Just yeah. like every single series of everything. Do you think? Every single series of all time? Well, at least Harry Potter. Okay, so one. <laughs> Remember when <laughs> My Jackson, Little Pony got yeah. darker and darker and darker? <laughs> Not every no. single series. Strawberry Shortcake? No. Leave it to Beaver? Oh, that did turn dark. <laughs> Leave it to Beaver. <laughs> well, let's talk about this. So the story was really about... Hansel and Gretel and their story. So these were characters we hadn't seen before. That was really cool. Uh Opening credits happened before we saw anything. So what did we see that told us what was this episode was about? This episode was about Hansel and Gretel because it's because they showed a gingerbread house. Right, they did. The Which gingerbread house eat. was in that in opening. You would yeah, you it. would totally give Daddy up. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Yeah. I can either save my father or eat this house. I'll, I'll eat, eat the, the house. house. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> Sorry. It, it happens. Although you said, what did you say about it, though? You said, I can't. I can't because it's gluten. Right. <laughs> so if, if the house said gluten-free on it, you would give Daddy up. What about None. just you would have you would have at least licked the icing on the cupcakes? Yeah. Ah, see, busted. We better not ever be in that position. Yes. Right. So the show starts out with Henry reading comic books. Wolverine uh-huh. versus Hulk. Yep. Awesome. And a girl named Ava comes up to him and and asks him what he's reading, and uh-huh. and a girl I, named Oh, sorry, I have no idea where they're fighting. No, I don't know why they're fighting. Now I want to read that comic. Are they normally not enemies? No, they're both good guys. But Hulk had white eyes, so maybe he just went berserk there. He wasn't Berserker normal Hulk. Hulk. Yeah. And Wolverine had to stop him. Yeah. Okay, we could talk about Wolverine and Hulk all night, but that's not what this show is about. So a girl yes. named Ava comes up, and, and, and she says, oh, I know you from school. Yeah. Yeah, and you're in uh, Mrs. Uh, Miss Blanchard. Yeah, Miss mm-hmm. Blanchard's class. But I don't. Th- did Henry recognize her? He didn't seem no, like he, didn't he knew seem who like they like were. Him. Yeah. Um. Uh-huh. So, and her brother Nicholas was there too. Yeah. And they invite him to come hang out, and Henry's thinking, "Hmm, okay, well, why not? He's he's a lonely guy. He doesn't have a lot of friends." Yeah. But what happens then? Then, and then. Her brother Nicholas hides candy in Henry's backpack. Right. Yeah, they 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 shoplifted. Who caught him? The store guy. Yeah, Mr. Sneezy. Clark. Sneezy. Totally sneezy. I love how uh-huh. his nose was stopped up when he was talking to him. Uh huh. You could very Henry, clever to have sneezy in there. That yeah. was great, and that he's a pharmacist. Because you'd need cold medicine. Yeah. That was so great. So do we want to just talk about this storyline and just follow it through? Sure. Okay. So um, the mayor shows up because the, the, the sneezy calls Henry's mom. Yeah. And so the mayor walks in and she said, Henry doesn't eat sweets. And he didn't do this. Come on, Henry. It was those children that did it. Right. And she just takes him, starts to take him right out of the store. Right. And just then Emma shows up. Yeah. Yeah. Because she's, of course, the sheriff and she yes. has to investigate. And then that was so funny when the mayor said, what are you doing here, Miss Swan? Right. And she's, she's like, the sheriff. Right. The sheriff. Of course I have to be I'm here. Suppo- well, she says just uh, bi- biological um Biology doesn't mean that you're actually his mother or something like that. Like she right. was, she was once again putting her in her place and saying, uh-huh. "You have no rights." Well, to and this she's child. still smarting from the fact that Emma became sheriff in the last episode yeah. because yeah. she lost that time. Uh huh. So she's not real happy about that. So um, Emma is talking to Ava and Nicholas and figures out that they were shoplifting to- toothpaste and things that they yeah. right, necessities. Uh-huh. And they said, oh, our parents couldn't afford, because they, they said, well, we're, you know, they didn't answer the phone. 
Right. And, and she said, said the phone oh, got the cut phone off. got cut off because they couldn't afford to pay the bill. And so Emma Emma believes them and yeah. says, well, let me drive you home. And, and um, so they're in the car and Emma tells the kids that she has a superpower. Yeah. Right. What is her superpower? The same one that your mom has. To tell when people are lying. Yeah. Mm. So. Except the problem is I don't know when I'm lying. Okay, I do not know what I'm lying. Mom always knows, so. Yeah, it's a good thing you're here because I do not know why I'm lying. Right. That's nice. <laughs> okay. I seriously don't. So, uh, Emma tries to get out of them. Is is what the story you told me true? Is everything okay at home? And they go, no, uh-huh. no, everything's fine. And they're at this house that, you know, it's so it's not the nicest it looking place. Nice. Yeah, it was fine. Well, yeah, it was but it didn't well have any, packed. like, it didn't have yes. any, like, you know, bushes or anything out front. It was just... No, but there. it wasn't... But it wasn't the a paint dump. wasn't peeling. You right. know, I mean, yeah. it was well kept. Yeah. But, but you know, they hadn't spent money on gardening or anything. Yeah. So... Yeah. No landscaping. No landscaping. So, so Emma yes. drops them off there, and, and I'm they wait thinking, for her to leave. there's no way she's buying this. Come no. on. If she has that superpower, especially... She is not believing these kids. Right. Yeah. But she lets them go. And the kids walk up to the door, and she drives off, and then They're like, Ava says... She's gone. Right. And then what do they do from run. there? They have to run to their a dump. Well, well they, they go to a basement. Yeah, it's like yeah. an abandoned house, because everything's yeah. all boarded up, and they go into yeah. a basement where they've obviously been living. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then they hear a noise upstairs. Uh-huh. And... Who is it? Emma is right there. Emma she totally is there. Totally busts them. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. So now the jig is up, and they have to admit that they live there by themselves. Yep. Yep. So she brings them to Mary Margaret's house. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And she's quite the tenant, yeah. you know? Because <laughs> right. when you rent a, a place from someone, and. Oh, then she's moved in. She just yeah. brings pe- random people, Mr. Gold's over, you know, <laughs> like she's got these random people. And now. She breaks her toaster. Now right. she's got these or- orphan kids. And she's only hanging known out. her a few days. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not funny. like it's not like you know we've been lifelong friends. Well, they could technically have. Well, well, it's her mother. Yeah, but she doesn't. She know doesn't that know yet. it. But she is acting very much like a daughter would. Yes. Yes. Like very comfortable there, just moving in. Uh-huh. So what was interesting now, um, you expect her to bring her to Mary Margaret. I would. St- I would, because she's would. a teacher. Right. Yes. And you would think that, you know, she's going to know these kids. Well, and the kids say that they are they know her Henry from the school. Right. Yeah. And and she says, well, I, you know, I recognize them, but I don't know them. Right. And, and they know nothing. No one remembers the mother. Right. Yeah. How is that possible? So the mother thing really was something I was thinking about during this. The... The curse is the reason that no one knows the mom. It's not that the curse caused them to forget. It's that the mom died before they came to Storybrooke. So, so everybody in Storybrooke, not only did they not remember, you know, their past, but, but people that weren't there, they don't know them at all. Mm. So if a character was dead before they came there, that the person that they would be in Storybrooke is non-existent. Okay. So they don't know. Because no one ages right. in Storybrooke. And, and see, Emma aged because she wasn't in Storybrooke. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, she'd be worthless because she'd just be an infant. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that would be very, she would be very hard for her to save anybody if she's an infant. Yes. I mean, now time is moving. I don't mean moving. worthless. Since, since uh, Emma showed up, time is moving. But before that, time wasn't moving. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So Ava's scared that they're going to be separated. Uh-huh. And so Emma figures her only shot is to find the father and see if, if he would take them in. Because maybe he just doesn't know they exist. Right. And yeah, he that's really her only exist. her only chance at this point. And well, and this is tweaking Emma for a couple of reasons. Oh, yeah. One is she had to give up Henry. Yes. And uh-huh. the other reason is she's said before that she was an orphan. We know why, but she doesn't know really. Right. So yeah. she was without parents and was in the system. Yeah. And she had to put Henry in the system, and this is just making her go crazy. Right, like, and they're going to be separated, which is making oh, it even worse for her. That's terrible. Uh-huh. So the mayor, she goes to get the file to get a fi- the file out on the yeah. kids, and the mayor has it. Yep. So she has to go to the mayor's and office. And then it just, it just, they're like, 
it does it like, hmm, I wonder who has that f- missing file. <laughs> and then, and then the next scene is her standing inside of the mayor's office yelling at exactly. her. Exactly. So the mayor then says, you have to take them to Boston and put them into the foster care system. Yeah. Right. And Emma is very upset. Oh, about yeah. Them. She's yeah. not liking that at all. Not a bit. No. Uh-huh. So, Henry, this scene I absolutely loved. Henry has the big book. He yes. brings it to Emma. Yes. So he's carrying the book yeah. around. He brings right. it to Emma, and he uh-huh. shows Emma who these kids are. And he said, and who are they? Hansel and Gretel. Right. Yeah. And the picture really looked like them, Yeah. Too. It looked, it was the kids. Yeah. So then Henry asks Emma, I he says, I want to know about my father. You haven't told me about my father. And what do, what is your favorite line? My favorite line of all time <laughs> in, in all the episodes was, I told you about your parents and now you're living with your mom. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it's Mary Margaret. And she totally is. And they're is. the same age. But it right. just cracks me up because they're... It's just so funny to think of Mary Margaret as being old, you know, being able to be her mother. Right, yeah. right. That they, was funny. They, they they don't really look alike. And then that was so funny when she's Mary Margaret was saying, "Well, you do have my chin." Yes. Right. Well, right. that spoiler alert. No, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> but um, uh, anyway, uh, Emma, uh, yeah, Emma tells Henry about his father. Right. And she says uh-huh. he was a firefighter. Says he was a firefighter. Makes him out to be a hero. He died yeah. what, saving what the family. What was he really? A jerk. Well, we don't we don't know she the said story. He, on she the said, dad, yes, she did. What well, she said, he's a jerk, and she she said, I wouldn't want Henry anywhere near him. Right, but we don't know if he's going to turn out to be one of the characters here. He could. I don't know. He, he could. could. He could Anything's show up possible. in town at some point. And, I think and I like know who her, the dad be, is. Who? The, I'm not telling. Okay. They got the end. Oh. I told spoiler you. Spoiler alert! No, because they would have, Emma would have recognized him. Right, she didn't recognize him. Oh. Oh, yeah. So, no, no spoiler alert. Didn't but happen. maybe he aged. Well, so did she, though. So did but she. They, they wouldn't have aged in a few months. Right. Well, years. No, she's only been in Storybrooke. Right, but she might not have seen him since Henry was, before Henry was born. So it's not a few months. Whatevs. Henry's like three months old. You don't know how long ago they broke up. Oh, you don't. Jerk. Yeah. I think, I think they broke up when she, before she went to prison. Yeah. And then she had Henry when she was in prison, we learned. Yeah. So that's what I think. So Emma goes, I I want to, I, I want to know why she went to prison. I know, they don't tell. Oh, I think we're going to find out at some point. So Emma goes into Mr. Gold's shop to ask him about the compass. Oh, because Ava gives him. Okay, Ava gave her the compass. Gave her the compass because she, Emma asked them, do you have anything from your parents? She said, every kid in the foster system that I knew And she has a blanket that has her name on it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is important. So Ava gives Emma a compass. That kind of rhymes with portents like you used in the ABC game. (laughs) <laughs> oh, you're funny. So Emma goes to Mr. Gold's shop and asks him about the compass. Right. And he knows exactly who bought it, and he's got the name of the person. Well, wait a minute. He says the name of the person. Yes. He he holds up a card, and he, he says was it right. was Michael Tillman. Oh, he was right, because he knows. Because I told but you. But then they show the card from his perspective, and it's blank. But you yeah. always said he does. I don't know if he knows. I'm telling you. Oh, he knows. He knows very well who's supposed to be with whom and what's going on. Yeah. Okay. So um, that's why the card was blank. Right. So um, she well, says he's, he's obviously got some magic abilities here, which is interesting that he's able to do some magic. I bet the queen is able to do some magic, but it might be very limited what they can do when they're in Storybrook. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So so Emma says to Mister Gold, "What do you want for it? What do you want for the name?" And he says, forgiveness. Yes. And then she says, how about tolerance? Right. (laughs) And he says, well, 
that's a start. Oh. So I'll tolerate you. How about yeah. we just go with that? I'm yeah. not forgiving you, it's but I'll than tolerate nothing. you. Uh-huh. Better than nothing. Um, so he says Michael Tillman. And so she, uh-huh. Emma, of course, goes then immediately right. to find this Michael Tillman. Yeah, without saying thank you. I'm no, very she, upset she did not say thank I you. I know. She just walked right out that door. Yeah. All rudeness comes with a price. <laughs> <laughs> so she goes to see the, the father, and he's a mechanic. Yes. And He's Mike in the mechanics. He has a garage. He that was a band of the eighties. That he owns his own garage. Right. And he doesn't believe they're his kids. Yeah. So he don't, but they don't really look like him. She shows him the compass and he recognized it. Yeah. And he said, I lost that a long time ago. So she implores him to take the kids, but he says no. Right. So Emma and Mary Margaret are trying to figure out what to do. He probably thinks there's some weird kids that grabbed his compass. <laughs> it could weird be. kids. Well, you know what? Once again, I think it's because of the curse, because he's forgotten mm-hmm. being there. So the idea of, of having kids is like, what are you talking about? He he knows somewhere inside of him, he knows there's something wrong with this situation. Mm. Not that he shouldn't have kids, but that there's something wrong. And it's a holdover from... When they were in fairy tale land, mm-hmm. could be, could be. That's, That's what I theory. think. That's yep. your theory. So Emma and Mary Margaret are trying to figure out what to do. Right. They're have so she, Emma calls her and says, "Meet me out front, so the kids don't hear." What are the kids doing? The kids, they're looking at the compass. No, in the oh, what wait. were the kid? What was Henry and Ava and Nicholas doing when Emma called? Invading the. Frosting. Right. It was like chocolate well, batter, be- frosting or before something. Before that, when she got the compass from them, they were eating cookies. Yeah, this coffee. is a junk food. These yeah, two are Even junk Nicholas food have some real issues with sweets, don't they? Uh-huh. And they're taking Henry down with them. Yep. Yeah, Henry was a- attacking it, too. Oh, it yeah. was funny. Yeah, he had the beater. He had the... Yep. He was eating the Ooh, beater. I would do that, too. So, um, so what are they... So, Emma and Mary Margaret, what are they going to do? I don't know. What I do you think? I don't. Aunt Mary Margaret says, what, are we going to adopt them? Right. <laughs> no, I, like what, what do you do? I mean, they can't do that. And and poor Emma is just, she can't figure this one out. Yeah. And at the same time, she's getting pressured from the mayor. The mayor wants these kids out of town. And she uh-huh. says, you have to take them to Boston. Yep. So Emma's taking them because now she yeah. has no choice. The dad refuses. Right. And there's uh-huh. no other choice. So Henry is standing there. The mayor's standing there. Yeah, they and, load the kids and in the Emma's car. And Emma's putting the kids in the car. And Henry comes to the window and he says, don't go. Please don't take them uh-huh. out of Storybrooke. Something bad is going to happen if they leave. And they have the batter. I would like a little lick before you go. Yeah. yeah. So then they're <laughs> drive. Emma's driving the kids anyway because she has no choice. Right. And, and she says the engine stalled. And she calls their... She has to call the mechanic. She has right. to call the tow truck. Yeah. And she calls Mike and the mechanics again. Michael has to come. Yep. Uh, wait, his name now, was Michael? Michael Tillman. Now, here's uh. my question. Did she? Did the car actually stall? Because no. I thought it stalled she because they were said, leaving Storybrooke, but she faked it, right? She said that she lied about the car to get him there. Oh, okay. Uh. I didn't catch that. Yeah, so, because he said there's nothing wrong with the car, is there? Right, and she said. Right. No, I just, I just, I knew that if you just saw them once, she said, I saw Henry and that was it. I couldn't leave. She said, I just thought maybe if you saw them once. And so he goes over and of course he sees them and they live happily ever after. Right. Because that's what they're supposed to do. Right. Exactly. So he takes them home. After, happily ever after, after dealing with all this garbage and story, Brock. I don't think it's happily ever after yet. No. We're not there. And then Emma and Mary Margaret are together t- talking about Emma and her experience and her desire to find her parents. And she tells her about about Henry's Snow White theory. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> and that's where she's... That you're my mother. That's when and Mary they Margaret la- oh, says, oh, you do have funny. my chin. Uh-huh. Yeah, and Henry um, sees Emma reading a file. She's in her police car. Oh, wait a minute. You missed something really important I probably here. did. I probably because when Emma it. leaves, Mary Margaret finds oh, the, the blanket. blanket. Yeah. The and what did she do to it? Emma's. She touched it, and then I 
and she smelled it. That's yeah. a little weird. Yeah, I think I. I think, would want to smell one of your blankets. I think Emma had a certain smell from when she was a baby. <laughs> <laughs> you had a certain smell. So as a I baby, thought for Stinko. sure it was going to cause a flash, <laughs> like it did with um, Graham. I thought for sure she was. That's what have I was thinking. And a you flashback. Know and I remember. think she did have something. A spark. Like, there seemed I, to have I been a I think there was spark. something, and that's why she put the blanket down really fast. So I think it's starting to bleed through for her, too. But I bet the spell is is heaviest on somebody like her because she really is somebody the queen doesn't want knowing who they are. Yeah. So Henry walks up to Emma sitting in the police car, and she's reading a file. It's her file about her childhood. And it says a five-year-old left uh, found a baby on a doorstep or something. Right. And... uh, so very interesting, and he brings her pumpkin pie because he he was saying that's, that's the my father. dad. You had told me that was my dad's favorite, yeah, right? And a stranger comes to Storybrooke. Yeah. He comes yeah. in on his motorcycle. Hmm. Mm, but who do you I, think that is? Bro- brother, one of the brothers Grimm. You said so, and well, and, I, that's and only I just, because you said you thought that he was a, like an author or something, right? But we don't know that yet in this episode because you've cheated and seen ahead, we've which seen, I have. We've not. only seen two more. Yep, we're almost caught up to Three. you guys. So, nope, two more. Oh. So, uh, so let's talk about Hansel and Gretel because this was my yes. favorite. Yeah. This was such a cool. So Hansel story. and Gretel are are out in the woods. Their dad yeah. is chopping down wood for the winter, and yeah. he needs them to go off into the woods to get smaller wood, kindling, if you will. It was right. a little bit yeah. bigger than kindling, but um, but he needs them to go and collect as much wood as they can find in their wheelbarrow. Right. Yeah. And he gives Gretel his compass, and he says, our family always needs to be able to find each other. Right. Very important. So um, so they're off, and they, they find wood, and then it starts to get to be about time where they say, we've got to get back. Right. We've got to start finding our way right. back. Time's up. They get back to where their father was, and and he's gone. And yeah, they're, they're running yeah, around. Yeah, you can see the, the, like he's finished chopping wood, but he is nowhere to be seen. Yeah. So they start running around trying to find him. She's looking at the compass, and then they thought they heard him. Right, and she's following the compass. The compass points that way, uh-huh. and it and points what do we right know at a a carriage that pulls up. What do we know now? We know. Because evil queen. the evil queen had him. Right, so he was so in the carriage. So how do we carriage. know he was in the carriage? Don't you think? She probably just silenced him. Right. She put him in that carriage. And that's those kids why, came running. That's, that's why, why they the heard him at the right road. To it. And what almost happened to the kids when they ran out into the road? They almost got ran over. By right. the, they trampled by, the, by her horse. Now, uh-huh. why did she take the dad and want them? What did she want? Uh, she wanted... Snow White's apple. Right. Well, she wanted the kids to go into the blind witch's house mm-hmm. and, and steal s- that satchel that had Snow White's apple. Right, the poison well, apple. first she tells them they they start to tell her a sob story about how their family, and she doesn't believe them. And she says she'll help them. So she captures them, but then she says, "I'll help you find your father." But we don't really believe her. Right. So, so that's kind of an interesting aside. Right, right. Um, she said, I'm your own. What? I'm your own what? On your, your own. Oh, I'm, I'm your own. <laughs> like you're on your own. I thought you own. said, I'm right. your own. You're on your own. Okay. <laughs> I'm ah. your own. I didn't know what you were talking about. We don't know weirdo. what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, weirdo. So, so, the, so Greta looks down and sees that the compass is broken. Yeah. Right. And the queen is taking them. To the blind witch. witch. Right. <laughs> yeah. They have to steal a, a black leather satchel yep, from her. Yep, there's something in it that she needs, but she says uh-huh. that there's magic around the house yeah. and she can't go in. So yep. it's got to be them. Yeah. And they se- she sends her in and she says, don't eat she, anything. She says, no matter how Which, of course, tempted you, you get, don't eat anything. Right, which is, of course, the classic Hansel and Gretel yes. story. And, of course, Hansel can't resist. Molly can't resist. And eats a cupcake, Molly. Hansel, I mean, Gretel, no problem. She walks in. She does her business. She gets the satchel. They would have been free and clear. 
But no, he's got to go eat the blue frosting. And as soon as he bites it, the blind witch wakes up and traps them. What if I eat a little lick off the frosting? See, I already know you're in trouble because you want to eat that frosting. You can. I Did will never wake? be saved. I can tell. So the so <laughs> the witch wakes up and you see in front of her a huge pile of bones oh, from little kids. Yeah. There are kids. little skulls and bones and it's yeah. awful. And so she locks them up and she's she's And then it, it's the classic she story. She squeezes Hansel's arm and she says, Nice and tender. What a succulent roast you'll make. Right. <laughs> this was such a fun so then, episode. So then Hansel tricks her. No, Gretel tricks her yep. to think that she's Hansel. Because she gets out, steals yeah, she, up her she, cheeks. She, yeah, said, like yeah. she's him. Like she's plumper. And then she steals the key. He gets out. He trips because he's a dope. And yeah. it causes the, the witch to go nuts. Because she hears him. Right. She hears yeah. him. But then yeah. they push her into the into the stove, just like they do. Yeah, they put her in the, in the story, oven, close uh-huh. it up. But she's just in there. You don't see flames. But then, through the mirror, what happens? The evil what does the queen, queen is do? Watching, well, what does she do? She throws more fire into right the, to into burn what? Up. Wait, where did she throw the fire? Into the oven. Right, nope, it goes through it, the mirror. Yeah, she yeah. threw it into the mirror. Yeah. It was crazy. From the mirror, it goes into the oven. And lights the oven on fire. Yes, yeah. and it's burning up And the what did she witch. say? She said, I would have preferred gravy. Because <laughs> right. cause the witch kept saying, butter or gravy? Butter or gravy? And couldn't uh, they? Right. she wanted the kids to decide how she should eat them. Yes. And so the, the queen says, I would have chosen. Gravy. I would have uh-huh. chosen butter. I would have <laughs> chosen butter as well. Mm. Yum. I, I grass fed gravy. butter. I like gravy. I like butter better. So, um, so better they, your butter. Better butter. Betty butter. So they bring butter. the queen the satchel, and inside of it is a poison apple. Yeah. And what does Hansel say? Uh, how could what he said? He said he holds it. He says, "How could an what?" You, we don't know okay, what you're hang saying. On. But you're going to edit this out. I okay. have to. Uh, what did he say? Hansel says, "You sent us in there for an apple. You know, it's yeah. just an apple." And, yeah. And she says, "It's it's a what?" And okay. then he says, "How could an apple?" Be? Okay, so start over. So wait, I'll 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 set you up. Okay. Okay. So they bring the queen the satchel, and. She pulls out, the queen reaches her hand in and pulls out an apple. And what does Hansel say? You sent us in there for an apple? Right. And then the queen says, not an apple, a weapon. Yeah. And he says, how could an apple be a weapon? And then I said, I would think, oh, yeah, she would throw it at her worst enemy. (laughs) I just so throwed it somebody. If you just whip an apple at someone. It could be a weapon, couldn't it? Um, so that she wants sense. them to live in the castle because they were the only kids who came back. She said, oh, I have sent so many kids in there and none of them have come back out. Well, She's well, got all these children she eating. all those bones. That was her. Um, that was the queen eat, feeding this woman. And crazy. she says, but now you guys came back and so I want you... To live here. Right. You can be my and, children, basically. You yeah. You can live in the castle yeah. and have anything you ever want. And they that's why she has. That's why she has Henry. Because she wanted a, chil- a child. Yes. Right. She thought Snow White was but not Henry, a good yeah. child. Yeah. Right. So she, yeah. Th- so she offers them this, but but they refuse. Yes. Because they want to yes. be with their dad. Yeah. They say, this is ridiculous. You're evil and we don't want to be there. Yeah. And the queen has the father. They actually say that she is evil. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Gretel pulls no punches. She just tells this woman. Right. She's not scared of her, which is yeah. crazy. So the queen, ha- we find out the queen has the father. Yes. And he sa- and she says, I-, I don't understand, you know, why, because neither one would give up the other side. The kids are now out in the woods. She's, she's dumped them because uh-huh. they wouldn't live with her. Right. And she's got the father and he says, he says, 
we're family and family always find each other. Right. And she gets a look on her face because she just doesn't understand. No. She's never had family. She doesn't know what she's had a dad. She, right. That she seemed to love, but she doesn't have that idea of what right. a family is. Right. She does not. So she says, then fine, I'll let you go. And, and now they have to find each other. And they yeah. showed the expanse of the woods. Right. And it's they, crazy. Like, they will never find Yeah, you don't know where the dad was dropped, but Hansel and Gretel are in the middle of a forest that is immense. And knowing the queen, uh-huh. she didn't put them near each other. Right. Yes. But, well, you know, in, in Storybrook, at least, they were found. They, they found, found each other yes. and were reunited. And so, that's what And matters. it feels so good. Reunited and it feels so good. Oh, that's now enough mom, of that song. Now mom's song time. Right. There you go. All right, so let's I, end this. Wait, 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 mom. You're going to have to do that again because I didn't do your introduction about that. Yeah, but you wouldn't have known. I was yeah. impromptu. Yeah. And now mom's song time. No, <laughs> not going to happen. Okay. All right, well, that's it. Thank you for listening, everybody. You can listen to... Uh, all episodes of Ever After at our website, which is www.southgatemediagroup.com. And be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes. We also have another show. We've split it now. We have Ever After in Wonderland, which you can also subscribe to on iTunes, which is about Once Upon a Time in Wonderland. Of course it is. Uh, so please follow us on iTunes, find us on Stitcher, find us on Facebook. You can write to us there and communicate with us. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at our Southgate, and you can also follow our company on Twitter, which Martha usually is the one that, that does, which is SMG pods, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, Sounds we give good. show updates okay. and all sorts of little things on there. So, and it's a great way to communicate with us. As Spider Man 360 knows, which Woo-hoo! is one of our followers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we got it he right this time. He sets us straight most yes. of the time. Not that that's an easy task. Yeah, but no. He, no. He does no. his best. Thank goodness he doesn't listen to some of our other podcasts where uh, <laughs> I get it all completely wrong. Yeah. You know what? Before we go, let's do one more little bit of business. Uh, we had a very special surprise show up this week. At our website, we have some sponsors now sponsoring our shows. And one of them is a company called T Shirt. Bordello, and they are awesome. They do all these really cool, geeky shirts. And they sent Molly a t shirt this week, which is so fun. Molly, what's on it? Horton walking around the TARDIS. And it's called <laughs> Horton Here's a Who, right? Because um, it's Doctor Who. Oh, uh, he's saying hello. Oh, <laughs> it's so great. So we'll have, if you, if you go to our website, you can click on a link and you can get a t shirt just like that. Or look at their other cool t-shirts they have. Lots of weird, geeky stuff there. Not all of it is appropriate for kids, so don't go there thinking, oh, great, kids' t-shirts. But some of them are, and some of them are just great like this one. So there you go. Thank you, everybody, for the Ever After Podcast. I'm Rob Southgate. I'm Molly Southgate. I'm Martha Southgate. And let's end this like every great fairy tale ends. Happily Ever After. The The end. end. If you would like to donate to help pay for this and other Southgate Media Group podcasts, simply go to our website, southgatemediagroup.com, and click on the Donate button. It can be as little as a dollar or, well, as much as you want. (laughs) Help keep this fun going by supporting this and our other shows. Thanks again for listening, everyone. You're the best fans in the world.